of his computer. Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, January 8th, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes or DJ Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host, DJ Wombat. Hello, hey. Wombat. Hey, I'm the Wombat. Hey, everybody. Today's guest is Dread Pirate Higgs from Arr. Austin, Canada. Welcome. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. If you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, <laughs> I'm hearing an echo. We have a group of over a thousand of us, the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Just let us wear hats. Just let us wear hats is the theme of today's show, and it's <laughs> going to be led by a bunch of irksome stories brought to us by our own Dread Pirate Higgs, but before we go into that spicy sauce, let's throw up some spaghetti on the wall and lead us, if you will, in our daily or our weekly invocation. Sure. Our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, al Dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Ramen. Ramen. <laughs> Guys, I uh, feel He's got pretty... the holy hand grenade. He's got the holy hand grenade. <laughs> I'd want to be able to do the invocations in sign language as Dread is doing ah. them in English, just for fun. See if I can pull that off. Uh, maybe try that in the future. Larry, love to catch up with you. You told me you were playing a video game called Star Citizen. Now, Star Citizen. Oh, I, I use the word playing loosely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Got the bare minimum of RAM, which is 16 megs. Or 16 okay. Gigs, sorry. So it's a little choppy, a little slow. Uh, it's it's taken a while to get going. It takes almost a half an hour to load. Well, don't worry. It only took 23 years for him to, to, to get it developed. It's still an <laughs> Yeah, and $500 million. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, it's it's uh, an interesting uh, test. But uh, I'm enjoying it so far. From a person who's played EVE and gotten pretty deep, deep into it, are you feeling the similar vibes from Star Citizen? Like, do you feel like this could be the next? Well, game? the biggest difference between EVE and Star Citizen is the first person. Mm. Um you get to actually roam around inside the ship. You can get off the ship on any other planet. You can go into cities. You can go into forests. Or, uh, you can, you know, do hand-to-hand -hand or first-person combat. You know, it's, wow. it covers pretty much everything. And it has huge planets that you can just roam around on. Uh, Gee, and, with, and, it's, and it's like a true space life job sim like you're not there to save the universe from an alien yeah. threat you are right. an engineer right. of like <clears throat> many others and you're just chipping on rocks and you're right. selling on the rocks yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. what's interesting is uh, you know like in eve if you want to shoot another ship you just point to them and hit a button hmm. on uh in this game uh, you can do that but if you have a bigger ship with multiple turrets you have to have people on those turrets Real oh. live on the turret, on the ship, on manning the turret. Wow. So okay. the battles get really intense and, and interesting. But enough of that. <laughs> okay. Very, very cool. Very cool. Guys, uh, is, is, I, cool. I do have a question about it, though. Is it it's a, like a subscription thing you yeah. got to pay for? Yeah. It's okay. it's about $40 for the software and $10 a month. Uh, but okay. I figured I'd try it for a few months and see if I liked it. And it's called what? Starship Citizens? Star Citizens. Star Citizen. Okay. Yeah, we're we are in the age of games that start with the word star and deal with space. But um, if you like Larry, if you like that, if you like that game, there's another game by Bethesda coming out. I imagine maybe this year or next year called Star Child, which is the exact same premise, exact same premise, but Hope it has less resource requirements. <laughs> less resource requirements, no doubt. You can probably play it on most consoles, and 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 I would imagine 
if you need a streamlined version of like Eve, not as in-depth or complicated or less person intensive as Star Citizen, Star Child might be the one for you. So you at least have these gradient. Um, and then if you don't even like that, there's another game called No Man's Sky, which in my opinion is- I have looked like, at that. Mm -hmm. it's, every, it's everything you just described, but solo and multiplayer, they just keep adding more stuff to it. It's really cool. It's a really good game. Um, on my end, I just made a new song. I feel good about it. I made, oh, yeah. I, there used to be a time period where when I was making music, it would take me like four hours to make a brand new song and I'd pop it out on the internet and everyone would have a laugh at it and I'd have fun and I'd get my creative juices going. But over over time, I'm, I'm taking the audio engineering aspect of it more seriously. And I'm realizing that there's a whole wealth of like tools that people use to make music sound good. That isn't just how well you can play an instrument. And it's like compression, EQ, uh, chain compressions, uh, verbs, reverbs, echo, delays, uh, uh, gains, uh, so many gates. There's so many things, so many terms. And when you like get into it, there's this like really nice community of people who will help you listen to music and understand how to properly pan everything, how to properly pitch everything, where is the peaks coming from and how to fix them appropriately so that the next time you make another song, it already sounds like studio stereo, stereo quality, but you just made it in your own bedroom. It feels really, really good to get better at that. And because cool. of that, and that's the, the next thing that I'm learning out of place. So when people say like, what's your favorite instrument? It's like my computer. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. But yeah, the, the last song I made was uh, the, the ultimate of it. Let me uh, see if I can fix my audio as I was talking about that story and tell you guys one last thing. Um, I have made it six months in my weight loss journey. I am now been maintaining my weight perfectly. I feel good. I have no fear of like going back up to the big weight that I was beforehand. Very good. Um, I just feel good. It's feel good just maintaining and realizing that I can maintain. Um, and if anyone has questions on how they can, uh, be good at taking care of themselves and losing weight and it's like a healthy way that doesn't require them to subscribe to a dogma of like ketoism or Atkins or God or whatever. Just like basic calorie deficit, you can start an Excel spreadsheet on your own, count how much you take in, count how much you burn, make sure you're at a deficit, that's it. And just keep it nice and simple and you can do that on your own. You don't need a 14 week course, you don't need a guru, you don't need a that's health right. You could do it on your own. It was just the best bottom, thing bottom, Yeah, bottom line, Ty, I think, is output must always exceed input. That's Period. it. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. And if you want to eat more, work out more. Like, it's literally that simple. Like, it's the best thing ever. And when you do that, you feel empowered because you know you did it. Not someone else or a trainer or a program. It was you. It was you 10,000%. That makes me feel good. I feel like we give a lot of credit to God when we can really just give those credits to ourselves and realize that we have the power Absolutely. to make the heaven that we want here on this earth. So, yeah. speaking of other things that deal with kicking God out of situations... <laughs> Dred, would you mind talking to us about? Oh, wait a second! Wow, what? that's a that's a really good segue. You can't okay. wear that hat in this podcast. I'm sorry, not unless you're Hindu or Sikh. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, so what's that? Sorry, I should have been listening when I was talking. No, it's okay. I'm just saying you're not allowed to wear that hat in this show unless if you have a uh, proper identification that you genuinely believe in your God <laughs> or that you are a Sikh or Hindu. I'm sorry. Or can prove it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, as you know, the uh, the battle is ongoing, and uh, certainly my uh, my latest uh, uh, letter to the manager there of drivers licensing integrity and oversight at ICBC is uh, a little a little sharp, and uh, I've just uh, you know trying to be polite and and uh, courteous and and all the rest of it. It doesn't seem to achieve anything. So uh, essentially making a threat to uh, civil action uh, is where I've had to take it. So, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's ongoing. And of course, the driver's, uh, you know, driver's licensing uh, branch there of ICBC, which is the insurance corporation of British Columbia, mm -hmm. uh, said they, they were not going to give me service uh, wrote a letter to my local driver's licensing branch yes. to say, refuse him service if he dares to wear his colander or his tricorn 
in an attempt to get his driver's license. Yeah. Let's, so, let's take a step back. That's and, pretty severe. Let's just take a step back and explain yeah. the situation for everyone who's coming. Well, in. let's first of all see if we can get rid of that echo. I hear everything that Dred's saying twice, and I'm afraid it's going to go out like yeah, that. Yeah, I was hearing that too, and I haven't changed my setup at all. You don't so. have speakers going. And I'll be honest, I don't hear any echo on my side. Okay, then go ahead. Okay. Let's see if I if it comes through on the recording. Okay, so uh, the story behind this is, uh, if you hadn't noticed, Dredd is wearing a tricorn hat. What do those look like? It's like a pirate hat with the three sides to it. It's like a triangular Well, hat. you know, and I mean, we, we consider ourselves... Just for radio a, listen. Yeah, we consider ourselves pirates as the chosen people of the Pastafarians. Fantastic. Or, or the flying spaghetti monster. So, so it's not an analogy. It is a pirate hat. It is what it is. And That's the, right. And the cool thing about it is... I can completely see Dredd's face. I have no issue recognizing him <laughs> from because if he was wearing a turban, the exact same amount of his face would still be exposed. Right. And so what's interesting in a lot of states in America, I would imagine all of them, and in, also in Canada, which is a bit more surprising considering I was hoping that they'd be more liberal on this idea or more progressive mm -hmm. is a better term, is that they have a rule that says you can wear a head garb if you are a particular if you are religious however they also over stipulated to say these are the approved religions that you're allowed to wear head garbs for yeah and that's the line that i find to be troubling because it's not up to the government to decide which religions get special uh credit or access to certain things and which ones don't it's a very dangerous precedent to set so in dread's case He's wearing a hat where I can see his face, and a Hindu might be wearing a turban where I can also see his face. Yet the turban gets to wear his religious head garb when he goes to take his driver's license, and Dread cannot. And that is offensive to me because it is special choosing by the government based on religion yeah. when they shouldn't have, one, the authority to do that, and two, any care because they're just a company that sends out plastic cards so you can drive and do your own <laughs> exactly. Stuff. What is exactly. their concern? What's the major harm? What? Why are we investing our tax services? Not me particularly, but you, Dread, in yeah. this in this safeguard. Like, what does this help? Who does this help other than marginalized groups of people who are on a particular list? That's mm -hmm. the part that really offends me. So, Dread, you've actually consistently been going to uh, the driver's license board or places to get your licenses, and you actually have a couple of licenses that allowed you to have your Tricon heart on. I imagine there yeah. was a fire yeah, arm, yeah. private detective. Could you mind talking about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I I currently have my uh, uh, Canadian Firearms Possession Acquisition License, hmm. which is uh, issued, of course, by the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Um, and so, you know, that, you know, is this, uses what is called facial recognition technology. And of course, facial recognition technology meets a standard now internationally um so where uh where headgear does not interfere with recognition facial recognition technology it's it's considered irrelevant uh, at, that is the case of course with sikhs and hindus who wear turbans and and muslims i know some muslims wear turbans um, but what is interesting in, in this case is the pretense that ICBC makes this accommodation for those whose religions prohibit them from removing their headgear. Now, as we all know, religion is a choice, except perhaps if you're a woman. And that I see as really the only people who were prohibited from removing their headgear as we can see from uh, instances of murder in right. iran recently right and of course the same thing has actually happened in canada where a, a woman was murdered by her brother and her father for taking off her hijab and refusing to wear it uh, i think this was back in 2012 mm. um but i mean you know what, what you know how is it up to the government any government you know especially our more western governments to say that we are going to uh, accommodate a an extreme religious position on the treatment of women 
right and then, I, and, I, then I, and then exclude everyone else that uh can't uh demonstrate the same thing another idea like you don't do a driver's license once a year i imagine it's like once every five years so yeah, if you're a right. hindu and you get your picture on this year you can become an atheist tomorrow not wear your yeah. turban for the next four years and then yeah. At the last week before you need to renew your license, be like, you know what? I kind of like that uh, turban again. Just put it on just for kicks and you can still get your license done. Whether you genuinely believe in the God or not or not, just because you look like it and you decide to wear the hat, you can. So there's no real litmus test on, well, he genuinely believes it and he's a Sikh. It's like, no, you can just be brown right. and wear a turban and get yeah. away with it. Yeah. Well, and that was actually a point I made as well to them to say, you know, there are people who would do just that in order to fit in with their, uh, with their, uh, you know, social circles or, or their cult cultural heritage, you know, uh, there's nothing to say that uh, a person and, and in fact, um, recently, uh, uh, one of our pastafarian crew uh, showed me a photograph of a license that a person used for ID, where it was he was a brown man, and uh, he was wearing a black toque, and to emblemize, you know, emblematic of being a Sikh. But apparently, either he didn't have his <laughs> turban with him, or or just liked the look, you know. But uh, it wasn't questioned at the time, so. Like uh, it seems, it seems a fairly arbitrary application of a very ill-formed policy. Dred, you could walk into the, not saying you should, but I'm saying you could technically walk into the driver's license board with a yarmulke on, and no one would bat an eye. Now, if you don't know on the radio, uh, Dred, while blazing in the Canadian sun, I imagine, is could be passable as a, a Western Jew, <laughs> more or less. You can wear a yarmulke, <laughs> and people will be like, oh, that's fine, go on ahead, just have fun. And take your picture and walk out and be like, one, I'm not Jewish. Two, I don't believe in this God. And three, you let me clearly wear religious garbs. If whether I believe in it or not, you still let me wear this one, but you won't let me wear the one for the God I actually do believe in. What is your malfunction? Stuff like that. And so what I really appreciate what you're doing is that you are stirring pot and helping people recognize that the, the idea that religious injustice occurring is not just something that's conceptual or something that atheists make up it's institutionalized mm -hmm. it's ingrained in our society it's held by authoritarian figures it's mandated in laws and it's something that is clearly explicit that we can point out and demonstrate through practice and yeah. it's still ongoing because yeah. the the other the alternative is for the the group that has the advantage to give up some of that advantage in the favor of treating people like mm -hmm. more humanely and i feel well said such yeah. a crazy thing larry what one, do you think one thing i'd also like to point out too is is like when we do the global atheist news mm. many of the points are taken from iran and indonesia and all these hotbeds of religious Correct. discord and activity yep where we have to recognize that violence is not only physical in form that it could be psychological violence uh, you know which is of course the kind of a violence that's uh, you know um, practiced by um you know catholic priests on altar boys or uh, by priests on residential school children uh, by taking away their culture and their language in favor of whatever the religious belief of the of the residential school facility is and of course on women you know uh, uh, women and uh, um in different cultures and in different uh, parts of the world but certainly in canada you know we're not seeing all this uh, you know rioting and whatnot that you see in iran right but it doesn't mean that the same things aren't happening here right correct uh, just Absolutely. not making the international news because it's not 50 people it's one well, I, I would argue that uh, one woman being killed by her brother and husband or brother and uh, father for not wearing a piece of clothing in accordance with some religious tenant is an outrage in yeah. equal power in proportion to 
50 or 100 or 1,000 people being killed so, for the same reason. So two points. One, the injustices that are going on overseas are in tandem going on here just under different brands. Yeah. And the reason why they aren't in media news, in my opinion, here's some opinionated news, is because news is entertainment on television primarily. And people don't like being challenged often. They'd yes, rather just be entertained. And what's entertaining is to say the bad guys are over there and there's a whole ocean separating us. Let's feel good about ourselves here by looking at the bad stuff way, way, way over there. And yeah, when yeah. you ever turn that vision on us and show like the January 6th, right, or insurrection, the events, or the institutionalized racism, or, or protests that are going on, or the stuff that you are going through, one, if they did that more, you would realize you're not the only person who's feeling that way. Because I can tell you there's a lot of times where I feel like marginalized, and I feel like, am I the only one? It's no. And when the protests were happening, it made me feel like, oh my gosh, there's other people who I finally feel the same way I do. We, we can collaborate and figure this out. But when you are the only one who you can see who's experiencing this, that disempowers you as well. And I feel like that's oh, part sure. of the, the, the agenda as well. It's like, we don't want to give too much attention to Dread Pirates problem because then other people who have this similar problem might band up and be like, hey, this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, in, in, like, I, I've been at this for six years. Yeah. And, you know, I know there's lots of people and, you know, most of the, certainly the vocal ones, the comments I hear are, what's the matter with this guy? Like mm. me. Right. You know what? He's an idiot. He's right. You know, he's stupid. It's such, it's such a trivial thing. Yeah. And that is really part of the, part of the point is that, it's not as trivial as everyone might think. Because right. When the boot's not on your neck. Institutionalized bigotry is institutionalized bigotry. Right. No matter what form it takes. It's, right. It is what it is. And it has to stop. And that's what I stand for. When the boot's not on your neck, it's just a shoe. So why would you care about it? <laughs> that's right? right. Right. That's right. It's footwear. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, it's the same thing. It's location, location, location. Once you put that on your neck, it becomes a thing that you want other people to pay attention to and you'll yeah, do anything yeah. to get it off of it. Larry, what do you think? Well, I was kind of wondering, I don't know the constitution or the laws in Canada, or, excuse me, where Dredd is from, but uh, do you have anything like no religious tests for office or no religious, uh, um, does for anything i mean is that codified it, it is and in, in, in fact it's enshrined in the uh the um, charter of rights and freedoms uh updated in 1984 uh, section 2a and 2b and it's right there under number one you know it's, it says uh, the right to religious uh belief or lack of belief and the right to uh, religious expression Okay, so therefore the, the government should not be in a position or put itself in a position to dictate whether you believe or not or exactly. test you whether you do or not. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, and this was part of the, the, the point I had tried to make even with Human Rights Tribunal who said, well, they don't argue cases of uh, constitutional law and or, or charter. Uh, they don't make charter arguments. And it was like, well, but you're supporting the BC Human Rights Code Right. which is the child of that charter. Uh -huh. And, you know, so, I mean, how can you, how can you say you don't serve the greater good or that you make somehow an exit for yourself by saying, well, we only look at the human rights code and you don't quite fit in there. Wow. I don't know. And that's exactly you must not what be they've human. done. Right? That's exactly that's the, what they've well, done. One of the problems of religion is that they tend to, to dehumanize their enemy. Yep. Uh, yeah, so that they can then uh, persecute or yep. at least sideline them and give them uh, limit their rights. And the, yeah. and the and the craziest thing is they once they have those privileges that they've taken away from other people, it's not like they share them equivalently with their followers. It's just only for their select few and all the masses vicariously sucking off that teat. You know, yes. it's hey, we will make sure this group can't, you know, take a picture or behave as humanly as you. But what does anyone else get from that other than the people in power continuing to marginalize others and feeling more ingrained to be able to take that power away from other people? Like right. that offers nothing beneficial to society. And the saddest thing is, is you are documenting this in such a way 
that in my opinion and you're in your in your candor with the government bodies are so responsible and intelligent and well spoken and, and well said and just clearly <laughs> outlined with all your problems mm. that you would think for just one instance you would just have a person who sees it and be like right okay you can take a hat come in on seven o'clock we'll take a picture of you with a hat on it's all good it's no big deal but instead they're like well i have also read the laws and and then they just start spouting off other nonsense what exactly. i would love for to see you do is uh make those just like a youtube video of just the letters that you're getting and just document this for history's sake tag it all with your possifarian uh um keywords that way you know other people looking up can find it it makes mm. me okay. really really sad when i have to see history in motion but i feel like this is one of those events this is one of the things where it's here's clearly the side of good here's clearly the side of corruption keep yeah. fighting yeah. keep going this will support you i think when we come back after the second break we'll talk about okay. what it would look like ideally when you get everything you want and you'd be surprised it's not that much right <laughs> and it actually help everybody right. but larry why don't you take <clears throat> us out sure uh, this is the digital free thought radio r stay tuned for the second half coming up in, after this break on wozo radio 103.9 lpfm here in knoxville tennessee we'll be right back after this short break Two. Hello, and welcome back to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour, second half of the show. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year, and it has we have over 1,000 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening. Look for us at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. We're inside at the high top tables, or if it's a really pretty day, we'll be out on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom ASK meeting. And if you'd like to join us, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschat se at gmail.com. You can find us online at meetup.com, knoxvilleatheists.org, uh, or just Google Knoxville Atheists. It's just that simple. We'll come up. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start ah, one. Start one. Right. Wombat, where you want to pick up? So we were talking about the injustice that occurs, not just overseas and not just with hijabs, but with in the uh, i would say the not continental in the united states but america in general because canada is still america whether they like it or not and it's happening here <laughs> it's happening here and while they say hey listen you guys have to wear this religious credit scarf or this to get certain rights in the u.s we're doing the exact same thing too to our own and, and or in the in the uh america in general and i feel like dread pirate while your story isn't as popular it's just as concerning and when I see mm. that happening and being promoted by in writing by government bodies, it's just one of those scary things where I think back to uh, the license plate situation that's happened here in the U.S., where uh, if you are not religious, your license plate starts with three letters. And if you are religious, your license plate starts with three numbers. And now you can just drive down the street and be like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> why do we have this as a rule? You don't know thing? about that? That's not a thing. That's not a thing. I can't. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. Here in Knoxville, here in Tennessee. Oh my goodness. That's the thing in Tennessee. If so, if you are secular, your not your license plate starts with letters. If you're religious, your license plate starts with numbers. And it's this clear. You can see it from fifty yards away. And you're just like, yep. why did we make this a thing? This is such a bizarre situation. Wow. And I don't. And the mm. and top of that would be like, well, if your license plate starts with numbers and you're religious, you get to drive five miles faster. Like that would be. The sort of insanity <laughs> that would be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why would well, Dred, Dred's probably wondering how do they know if you're religious? Um, uh, you get to choose when you buy your plate whether you want in God we trust on it. And if you ah. put yes, I want in God we trust, then it starts with numbers. If it, if you choose ah. not to, then it starts with letters, which makes it um, you makes you wonder why would they do that? That your car would be you'd be able to pick out the non-religious people at, at right. a distance of fifty yards. All right. Yeah. 
and that, I'm gonna add. That, that's insane. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna add some more. That, that's not everywhere. That's just in certain states. It's in Tennessee. In it's Tennessee. at least in Tennessee. Okay. At least. Yeah, in Tennessee. we don't know. I don't know about any other states right now. Huh. So I would say this. Here's some more granularity. The state official license plate starts with letters. Okay, that is the default option. However, when you sign up for a license plate, you can select a vanity plate that looks like a mock of the at no uh, extra cost issue one at no extra cost and it's advertised on the form and so it's an option for you that's handed out there's a lot of vanity plates that you can get like autism uh supporting hunting cancer awareness but you have to pay for those what the state does is offer a free religious vanity plate but it does not have the standardized uh out, uh template Format. for Format, exactly. Format for letters and numbers. What they did is just swap them, and they look so similar that they look like state-issued. And so what happens is a lot of people pick the vanity plate that's the Christian version of the state version of their plate, and then they put it up. And so you have a bunch of vanity plates that look like state plates, and then you have just standard state plates. And some of the state plates that are non-religious, those people are, in fact, religious. They just don't want the state to be supportive of their religion. They just want to either have a bumper sticker or, you know, keep the state right, as right. state. Or a little fish. Exactly. Whereas and... every single one that's religious, that's a religious person. So what else can you say about it? And wow. Well, you could say that there might be non-religious people who haven't come out of the closet, haven't. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, oh, sure. It, it bowed of the pressure from their family, their society, the church, whatever, because they, you know, they don't want to stand up for it or their Very workplace true. and Very face true. the discrimination. And here's yeah. a here's a bizarre thing. So I love yeah. taking numbers. We had uh, Boudreau on last episode. He was a PhD in civil engineering. He loved this. I was talking about it with him. Uh, I looked at every single county, and we looked at the percentage of religious plates to non-religious plates. And of course, it's not a surprising trend. The more rural and smaller the county, the higher the percentage of uh, religi religious, religious plates. plates. Right? Whereas the biggest ones, the ones that are a hundred times larger are at the lowest end of that spectrum because there's just more diversity, more income. Uh, uh, just when you push people into more prosperity, generally. more prosperity, you're <clears throat> going to find that they aren't as religious. They, mm -hmm. and that's, that's, that's a very telling kind of crutch. It's, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's harder to have mm -hmm. in and out groups in a, in a urban setting, right? Right. In a rural right. setting, people gravitate because they've, you know, studied the, uh, the township or the county or whatever and uh discovered you know wow that's mainly catholic or that's a bit pap just county or whatever so they can gravitate there whereas right. the city it's pretty hard to do that right right and so like the counties that have like less than ten thousand people counties not cities counties that mm -hmm. have less than ten thousand people they're like 99 percent religious but like wow. the ones that have over half a million people or seven hundred thousand people like davidson county where nashville is located huge mm -hmm. counties that have hundreds of times more people, 13% religious plates. Right. When we were doing the math, we found that a startling large number of people in Tennessee are in fact using the state-issued non-religious plates just by default. Just by pure number alone, it's staggeringly high. It's like 20% are total are religious people. Everything else is non-religious. Wow. And that's Tennessee. Yet yeah, Tennessee is just through gerrymandering very very conservative and i'm like okay well this is a mind-blowing propagation then because we have so many people here who are at least would be willing to understand concerns from a secular point of view and think mm. and, and and prosper and promote science yet we've staggered or stacked the deck so much against them politically that we are still in a red state however we are leaking we are very much leaking out and like all the large counties are leaking out into these smaller ones or whenever uh, small counties can't support themselves and they have to commute into the larger communities to like get jobs or whatever for like their next generation and they come back home, they suddenly become less liberal as a result of the fact that family members are seeing the light and getting outside of their own neighborhoods too. So I don't expect the trend that we're on to go backwards. If anything, we're going to just continue to go forward. And my my big concern from last episode was we are pushing ourselves towards, in my opinion, the next enlightenment where we recognize that we don't need to have this religious crutch supporting yeah. ourselves as we continue to appreciate and uh, another better understand science and be able to have better access to higher qualities of information and and explanatory systems. Mm. The and I'm hoping that gives us better empathy for your situation as well too. 
Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, you know, and I've said this, I think, a number of times is where it almost seems that uh, the religious right are kind of doing that last gasp before mm. they start to go under. Um, because the, the writing is clearly on the wall that uh, religious affiliation is on the decline. And throughout, as you say, America, right. uh, Canada and the United States, both uh, in Mexico, I'm sure, I, I don't know, maybe. But um, um, I, I was going to say, because you had mentioned about my security license and and that uh, recently, uh, well, last year already by now, um, I had changed my designation. I had included uh, the private investigator uh, designation. And that's what you have to, of course, change your card. So they give you an opportunity to upload a new photo. And of course, the photo I uploaded was one depicting me and my tricorn. And it was accepted, and I was issued a card with my photo depicting me and my uh, tricorn. Yeah. And it was three months later, I got a letter, not from some staff or some underling, but from the highest authority, the registrar of that ministry, who said, you either give it back or we're going to review your license, which, of course, is... Uh, government speak for take it away and screw you over essentially um, so I had to submit um, that particular instance now is before the BC ombuds person the office there um, because again I document everything so Good. it's so very clear that I've gone through all the steps in order to um, argue my point that the last person to whom I could actually make a complaint was the registrar. And it was the registrar himself, through that old trickle-down effect, right. um, that was the source of the whole discrimination in the first place. Yeah. And so, so, uh, so, so the ombuds person's office has, uh, has taken on the case. Um, they're, of course, in a backlog. So it's been a while since I've had any communication. But they're, you know, they are assigning a an, an investigative team to it. Sure. Uh, with respect to the um, ICBC stuff, uh, I, as you may know, and as I pointed out in in my uh, my video, that I had obtained, uh, I asked for made an FOI request, Freedom of Information request, and uh, had returned to me six hundred and ninety pages, ninety one pages of mostly redacted inter-office email. And, and so the point, of course, I make is that, you know, you can say that you're trying to accommodate people of religious belief who are prohibited from removing their headgear, yet the policy itself you won't share with me. Right. And the, the things that go to inform the policy are sealed behind redacted documents right 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 so of just, course i i've applied bigots to protecting the... other bigots so they can continue yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, it is that's exactly yeah. what it is either that are complete so, morons or cowards or a combination <laughs> of all three exactly and so i've I, i've successfully applied to the office of the information and privacy commissioner here in bc to have those documents unsevered and the uh the office has uh demanded from icbc uh, all those redacted and un or unsevered documents, right. all 690, 191 pages of it. And of course, my rationale in asking for that information in the first place was to see what is informing their policy decisions right. and what's going on. Because right. if at the end of the day, they are, you know, cheerfully and inter um, you know, having their own fun and, and just saying, uh, this guy's a nut job and just bullying. And let's just make mm -hmm. some stuff up and, and uh, we'll show him what's who's boss here. Right. For no uh, good right. reason other than <clears throat> like, think about it, three months pass. So like, if it happened today, we wouldn't have this conversation until March. Right. Like we'd right. just be sitting pretty and someone says, I'm going to cause a problem for this one guy because I can Right. Yeah. Not because yeah. I'm afraid of who, whatever you can do to me, but because I feel like I can. And I'm reminded of a story that we had some firemen come over and you used to be a or dread. Are you actively a fireman? 
Are you I used to be I, for 11 years. He tells us a story. We play disc golf with him all the time where you can have two fire departments. One puts out 50 fires a year. Or the other one puts out one fire a year. The one that puts out 50 isn't necessarily better than the other department because you can't control how many fires you're going to get in a year. So you don't use that as the criteria to determine how mm. good of a fire department there are. Sometimes when there's no fires and the fire department doesn't do anything, they're still doing a good job. It's the people that go out of their way to cause a problem. It's like, oh, I only put out one fire this year. Let me cause 49 other fires. Uh -huh. and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can be the number one fire department. There are some people in the world who like take that criteria and flip it upside down and make it a problem. And for people who three months after the fact are still clearly didn't hurt anybody, clearly, you know, benefiting society through their licensing. And you decide, I'm going to take that away just because they're wearing a hat I don't like. That mm -hmm. is causing a problem rather than resolving a problem and you have to think if that is an elected official or if that's a, a privileged position that some guy got that is effectively a person with a hammer who's looking around and seeing everything as a nail and just trying yeah. to figure out a way to use his hammer anytime yeah. he possibly can it's a power trip at the end of the day but, absolutely <clears throat> i feel scared sometimes listen i i can tell you with the license plate situation we had here in the u.s or in tennessee at least i feel more paranoid now if i ever were to be pulled over just due to the fact that my license plate clearly would indicate that I'm not religious. And right. most likely a lot of the cops here are. Depending and, on which which county you're going through, too. Oh, it's yes. Like, some of them yeah. are as high as like 98% oh, uh, yeah. religious plates. Right. I'd be really scared. I'd be like, oh, this is another thing I have to worry about now. Like, <laughs> what a silly yeah. situation to be in, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, you know, um, yeah, and I, I guess there's a there's an app on your phone that uh, you can set your your iPhone up so that if you're pulled over, you just say, "Hey Siri, I'm being pulled over," and it all of a sudden, <laughs> see Siri just came on, but uh, it sets your phone up so that it goes dark but records everything. Ah, interesting. So it's a clandestine recording app. Okay. Uh, in the event that you get pulled over, so the cop doesn't know that. Uh, What's the name of the app? For I, I can't remember. I, my son told me about it. I haven't actually checked it out. Well, that's likewise terrorizing because like you, you should be able to record yeah, in public. Sure. You should be able to record in public, even if it's your own arrest. Uh, and I, and cops who are like, don't record me right now. Those are the ones right. that are even more terrifying. But even yeah. cops mm -hmm. in the U.S. due to Black Lives Matter now have body cams on them in mm -hmm. the state of Tennessee, which I figure is one of the top three things that we should have had to begin with. You should always be documented as a person of uh, power when you're interacting with citizens. And yeah. to think that that wasn't a rule otherwise is outlandish. And I love the fact that you are continuing to document this, Dredd. Here's my recommendation. I want to start off. I want to end us as, at least on a good note. Here's my recommendation on how to solve this problem. Just let people wear hats. Just make that the rule. Like, don't make the, you can make a secondary rule saying, hey, don't have anything offensive, like offensive slurs or like body parts on it like you can't come in with like a hat that's literally like boobs and be like i worship those like that's i i, uh, I it's not a religious thing we're not telling you not to wear it because we disrespect religion we just mm -hmm. feel like that's on our offensive list which is not at all based on your religion it's just you can't wear hats with boobs on it that's that's a that's a uh a, a, a prudish policy but it's not a bigot bigotry based policy yeah. So just say, hey, you can wear hats if you want to, just to make them offensive. If it is, put the sensor bar on or whatever, and we and we take a picture. Just don't cover your face because we need to see your face. It's a practical rule. That's it. And then after that point, you don't have this marginalized bullying that's going on in other people, and you have a rule that can better apply to everybody. Why? What is the problem with that? Dread, what do you think? Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, and it's interesting that that should be the case. It is to a certain extent in BC. Uh, women can wear headbands. Mm. Um, there's there's actually a whole sheet on uh, what um, criteria uh, you have to meet in order to wear some hair accessories. And so I actually uh, made an attempt to have a headband above the hairline, meeting the criteria, but it just had the image of the flying spaghetti on, monster on it. They they said nope. We don't care. Even that rule, you can't use. Our wow. own rule, which we allow for other people, we don't for you. What about tattoos? How that tattoo thing? Uh, well, yeah. So I did, of course, my current license has 
I mean, with a uh, temporary tattoo of the flying spaghetti monster in prominent form on my forehead. Yeah. They can't do anything about it. Can't do anything so, about that. It was so I'm, I've been thinking maybe I, next time I lose my lose my license, like drop it or can't find it. I get uh, uh, one of those temporary tattoos that says frack ICBC. <laughs> <laughs> I Listen, you don't have to get down to their level. I, I like the right. path that you're on. You're right. Now. You're right. Course. I'd like the path that you're on right now where it's just FSM. I was thinking like if you were ever to do another step, it would either be, and listen, I don't, I, again, I, I wonder about the, the underlying messages behind this, but you wear a yarmulke that you wear a yarmulke or a turban that has the FSM pattern on it or, or something that's closer to one of their more approved religions. And then be like, by the way, I don't actually believe in this God. I'm just wearing a hat, which you're allowing me to. That yeah. seems bizarre. Like you didn't have a problem with it then. So if anything, if there was ever a litmus test of them being in their own butts, it's you have to be approved religion. It's like, I'm not even this religion. I'm just wearing a hat. Oh, well, I'm wearing a hat, but you can't wear a hat because you're not one of the approved religions. Like you are up in your own. Yeah, no, they, you know, and this is the thing, uh, you know, when I said that, uh, I mean, you made, they made the claim, of course, mm. that, uh, that, uh, that their decision says, please note that ICBC's decision was made after looking at all the submissions, the facts, and the law. They don't say it's based on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have not. no citations. There's no citations. It's, it's like clearly that. not based on anything. They're just saying, yeah, yeah, we looked at this It's stuff, just posturing. It's just we posturing. We don't care. Right, right, right. Yeah. And I want, I wish lawyers would take this up more enthusiastically. I know there's not a lot of money behind it. But I wish there was like a, a a lawyer who would like walk you through all this and yeah, like absolutely collate all this. So just continue to document and keep sound blasting. We'll continue to do it on our end too. Um, my my final thoughts would be in the same way how fines, crimes that you commit where the penalty is a fine are really only for poor people because rich people don't really have to care about fines. Laws that exist in this nature really where they only affect very marginalized groups are just to add more authority and posturing for those who are in positions of advantage. And mm -hmm. I think it makes the, it sets us up for the worst parts of the human condition where we like to have a, a pecking order. And at the end of the day, the fact that you can deny the human rights that Jed has to, to respectfully conduct himself as a human being who's a possible, who believes in a possiparian God, compared to a guy who believes in a a, 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 a snake that the gives advice to nudis or something yeah. like that, or a six-armed blue god with an elephant or something like that. Yeah. Like the fact that you can do that is really upsetting, but also speaks to the idea that it doesn't make your god any more um, real. And if anything, it only demonstrates that he's more of a tyrant and you, and you are embodying that tyranny through him or her or it. And making it even less likely that atheists would be more inclined to take you seriously. It just puts you further into the the basket of terrible ideologies and bad examples of dog, dogma in action. Yeah. So, Larry, or as they say, batshit crazy. <laughs> batshit crazy. And I think what we'll have is um, the uh, the demonstration <clears throat> that this will be hopefully the dying throes of religion before we're all done at the end of the day. Dread, uh, uh, Dread anything you'd like to plug before we're done? Yeah, of course. I uh, have my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you just click in at Mind Pirate and you all come to my channel. I record nice. this Sunday mornings when I'm on at uh, 7 a.m. PST and Global Atheist News at 11 a.m. on Sundays as well. Pretty cool uh i'm let's chat you know what in the comment description i'll put a link to the song that i just made i feel good about it and also look up some possiferians and subscribe to some possiferians on youtube there's uh a great there one great community and two way more than you would anticipate so find them and realize around the world they're all around the world and and the more attention we can give to them the better because the news may not do you a favor in that regard larry anything you would recommend well, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Excuse me. And be sure to click the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. Uh, my YouTube channel handle is at Doubter5. 
And you can find my book on atheism called Atheism, What's It All About? on Amazon. So it's there. Thank you, Dred, for showing it. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.